find the friendship bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Zane, and I'd like to show you this custom modular synthesizer titled Makeshift Modular. This system has a range of different panels in it. A lot of them are just made from really simple circuits or circuit bent toys that I've found online. So here are some examples of what I managed to turn Buzz Lightyear into. <laughs> Now, with circuit bending, all toys are based on an RC timer circuit. The discharge rate of a capacitor determines the rate at which that toy functions and runs. So what you can do is, if you wet your finger and you just kind of place it all over the board, you can then hear a point where suddenly the volume or the pitch changes on the toy. And that indicates that that's a bit of the circuit that's going to actually change how that toy operates. What I then like to do is go through recording the resistance of that resistor so that you've then got a baseline that you know you can work with. For this Buzz Lightyear toy, the resistor was 47 kilo ohms. So I went and found a potentiometer that was around 100 kilo ohms. So that then gives me a big range to kind of play with. And from that range, you can pitch it really high and pitch it really low. And I thought his head does have a motor in it, so I modified it so it could spin all the way around because I thought it would add just a little bit extra to the uh, experience. Then we went on a trip to Melbourne to go see my grandma. I found, I think, the best, best toy I've ever found, to be honest, a Dora the Explorer backpack. Now, I'll be honest, the, the circuit bending did make it a little bit demonic, but it's an absolute beauty. So if you're not already terrified, then uh, I guess we'll continue. I found this old Serato DJ mixer. So initially, the first thing that I did was go through and make sure that I could get these buttons working again. Figuring out where the LEDs and the button pads were, hooking them up to an Arduino, and then writing some code that could enable me to trigger the lights on the buttons when the Arduino hit. This code could then also be used to trigger other things. So the next step after having these kind of buttons working again, I was trying to figure out a way in which to build the box around these different panels. Initially what I did was went through and started measuring out all these different parts so that I could turn them into panels to put in my own modular synthesizer. So I built some cardboard prototypes where I basically cut out a quick iteration to get that mixer board in and start testing the sizing and how everything might fit together. Then designed a Fusion 360 model. So here's the model that I made and if we look at the parameters that I've set up, you can see how it's all based on the Eurorack modular format. So this is a, a 104 HP case, and with that I can then do my calculations based on the standard dimensions that are listed within the specifications for that. So if you were using this model, you could basically resize this to any size. There's also all the material thicknesses of the acrylic and the kind of main materials. So if you've got different materials that you're working with, you can basically go through and change those to adjust to what you're trying to use. Now, all of the different notches and little hinges that are being used, I've tried to model in such a way that they'll adjust to these different sizes, but I'm not entirely sure if that's gonna be the case. So you'll just have to test it out for yourself. So if we jump now into the other panels that I also made or kind of tests as I got to the stage, we've got the mixer PCB. And so with this, I took a photo and then went through and basically traced the outline so that I could then model these into the different panels. So here we have all the modular panels that I created initially to kind of start beginning testing the circuits and figuring out what I wanted to put into this modular synth. I then went through and started designing kind of some rough iterations of my casing. I was originally gonna go with this kind of slanted design, but on testing that, it didn't quite work how I hoped. So what I settled on, and as you've probably already seen, is this design, which is a glorified box, to be honest. The thing is though, that I've kind of put in this acrylic viewpoint at the front of it 
and also this cutout near the back which enables some LEDs to be put so that can light up the kind of surrounding. These hinges which I'm quite proud of are 3D printed in place so they lie flat and then you just print them up and they work. There's no need to do any assembly or anything like that. The key for that was um, really honing in the tolerances so it could work how we wanted. Now with these flaps, they're secured in with super glue uh, so that they can just basically fit right on there. There's a uh, cutout right here to enable it to easily be transported and taken around. So I now had all these different panels for my synthesizer, uh, two to three toys, old theremin circuit that I built quite a while ago based on a book by Nicholas Collins. I then also had one that built using a bunch of Arduinos and the Mozzie library, which I'd highly recommend checking out, that can enable you to create really cool oscillators using just Arduinos. Link is in the description. Then it came to the final showcase night. I basically set everything up with this kind of blue LED theme, and it was great seeing my mum and all these other friends and family just basically playing with this synthesizer that I created. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope it helps if you're in the process of exploring experimental music and building your own synthesizers. This was built for under $100 New Zealand, about $50 US, and if you like this, feel free to subscribe.